I've there's seen a lot of time mm-hmm. wasted in actually like getting buy-in from like kind of like stakeholders, yeah. which is also bullshit. I don't know how that's productive as well, but this is a great corporate game. I mean, I'm sure some of the audience will be in yeah, this yeah, game as well. They're definitely in the game. And the game. <laughs> no, no choice we're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> okay, welcome back to another episode of Wise and Shine. I'm your host, Reggie, aka your chief financial coconut. And I'm Don, SG Budget Babe. Today we have two guests with us for this episode on productivity. And the first one is. I'm Khaled. Hi, uh, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Dobbin, a financial app that is going to be, you know, very famous hopefully in a few weeks. Mm, hopefully challenging everyone, right? Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And, and our other guest has been blowing up social media, uh, so we're going to see if that happens again. <laughs> no, probably, hopefully not. Uh, uh, well, hi, I'm Mark and I'm the founder and CEO of uh, two media publications, Rice Media and Blockhead. Yep. I don't think they don't know you lah. <laughs> you are quite regular on the show. I, I've came in once, sir. This one, yeah. one Actually, episode. only one episode. Wait, is it? Just one yes, episode? Yes, it's just well, that. Because like, so, oh, we record every week. Uh, that's our problem. We got another oh. show running. We, we have another show called Blockcast that, that talks about blockchain, uh, web right, stuff. So, right, like, right, uh, right. Yeah, so yeah, I feel like I talk to him all the time. Right? Okay, so but like, here on okay, Wise and Shine, Shine is Shine. his second episode yes. of which the first blew up. Yes. The first blew up, man. I'm surprised I actually got an invite back. Oh, that, that <laughs> <is> the... <laughs> <laughs> so, so check out the ACS episode. <laughs> but regardless, regardless, okay, today we got to talk about another hot topic. Like, I would say maybe it's already quite a hot topic since last year, but today, if to, this year feels like it's just kind of blow up. Right, which is this whole question of productivity, right? And are we in a productivity paranoia type of situation, right? And some of the bigger publications have put up articles to say like, oh yeah, people are quitting their jobs, you know, they're not coming in and people are less productive at work and all that. So some entrepreneurs and some business people are very concerned, you know, like, mm. are, are we, is productivity going down? But on the other end, like a lot of us are like, oh my God, can you just shut up about productivity? <laughs> Like it's it's an endless topic. So today we're gonna to talk about productivity paranoia and like maybe we can drop some productivity hacks lah and, and just kind of share with everybody. How do you think about productivity? So actually this conversation is not new. I mean during new. the pandemic, um we already heard that, right? When everyone started working from homes and then bosses and managers were all like, don't know whether productivity will drop. And obviously we saw what happened, time and the person themselves is the proof. Mm. So we let the actions and time do all the talking right and now the reason why it's up again is really because of the whole you know the layoff the resignation but also because of AI Mm. artificial intelligence which has led to so much pressure I don't know about you guys I feel very pressured yeah I feel very very pressured pressured. to learn new things not just that but even as I think also for people whose trade are affected Mm. so like people who are in writing who are in content creation software engineers um, coders you know all of these can now be either outsourced entirely or partially to AI like ChatGPT mm. and the others, right? So it really cre- makes you feel so stressed. Like, what do I need to do to be even more productive than the AI who might be taking away my job so that I still have my job? Mm-hmm. You know, so, so, so maybe we should ask the AI guy first, right? Yeah. Is AI going to take over my job? I think it's a, it's a technological revolution. And we've seen many of these uh, like over the past you know decades, I would say. And each time there's this, the same question, uh, am, am I going to go out of business? Am, am I going to be employable in the future? And the short answer is some people would and some people wouldn't. And I think those who would, it just means that there is a more efficient way to do what they've been doing and they should be able to, in, to do something else. Uh, personally, I think AI is uh, still just a tool Although it's a very powerful tool, you cannot use AI, you know, standalone. So AI needs people to make sense of how to use AI or AI tools. Mm, thank you. That means we'll still be around. <laughs> <laughs> but you will be doing something else. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> real, but I'm not so sure if I'm very thrilled to keep doing something else. You know, this is an endless, endless okay, but on the situation. Flip side, mm. um, I mean, AI also is making this whole productivity paranoia even more stressful. Right. So mm. how does your team deal with that? Do you feel that, uh, especially because you guys work with AI on a fairly daily basis, yeah. do you feel like all that stress and urge to be even more incessantly productive because the AI is being is able to do so much more and so much faster than what you guys can humanly? 
Yeah, I, I guess it, it comes down to shifting, um, like f like if, if the what we're talking about is a cake, is giving a big, bigger piece of the cake to AI versus increasing the cake. And I guess what we're doing is using AI is, is basically driving value that doesn't exist, that didn't exist before. For instance, like you know, Adobe, we harness transaction data with AI to make sense of it. And that sense is not being made by people today. Like it's not possible for human brain to kind of analyze all the data and say, so this is basically my affinity with certain merchants. So that's what we do with the AI. So we're creating value from that sense. And hence, we're not being challenged because it's not task we're doing today that are going to go to AI that things that are not being done that are going to be possible because of AI. Now, if you do- But doing... there are other tasks that are directly being automated. Co correct. AI, right? So, so, that so that's, is, that's yeah. the shift. And, and yeah. hence, back to my previous- So to answer your question, um, we're trying to use AI to, to drive incremental value, new value. But uh, I appreciate that other fields of AI, like generative AI, and we talked about ChatGPT, would uh, disrupt some tasks and you know would replace some some you know some some tasks and some people doing some tasks. Do do I feel the pressure to do better? And yeah, every day it's not driven by ChatGPT. It's just uh, you know strive for excellence. How about yourself? I mean, we're in the media scene. That's one of the first places that AI is disrupting, especially with ChatGPT. Well, I mean, I mean, uh, my personal thoughts are that like you know, first of all, the media industry is one of the toughest industries out there to be in okay? uh, it's been if i knew about how crazy <laughs> it would be i would not no i mean here. like you know we, we've we've already been like the disruption of media actually i mean the meeting media, media's been disrupted at least two thousand times really right, mm -hmm. since in the past <laughs> okay <laughs> that, that's an exaggeration but if you think about where we came from mm -hmm. print newspapers all the way down to where we are now right mm -hmm. we are in effect built for for this Okay, like people who are, who are still in the media space right now, right? They thrive on adaptability, right? This kind of chaos is something that, you know, it's just, it's just par for the course, you know? Like this is what we, has to happen, right? And so I think being from an industry that is used to change, there's no use fighting it. Definitely on a content creation level, it would mean that certain roles would be disrupted. I think that you can't, you know, that there's no way that you can not think about it that way. Mm. Where the media actually has relevance or, or, or where where it still has its, you know, last bastion, <laughs> right? At the end of the day, when you go to say media, right? The reason why we are here, all here on this podcast, right? It's because it's a credible brand, right? When you Thank actually you. appear on Wise <laughs> and Shine, right? Can you <laughs> right? Right, but so, so there is still that brand credibility because, you know, third parties coming in, but they've done their research, Right. And also a long history of like great productions. So therefore we have people and guests on this show, right? You can't do that with AI. So that that is still where like I think in terms of building that brand equity for for a media brand, right? There's still a lot of relevance. It's just that the production processes are going to get automated and some jobs are going to be at stake. Yeah. Right. Whether like that, whether the industry can keep pace and then adapt fast enough such that, you know, we can either retain or like kind of um uh uh adapt, right, to the change. Uh, I think that, that that's an open question, lah. You know, but yeah. the other thing I have to say also is that don't join. No. <laughs> Let's go somewhere else. Don't I, join the media. Yeah, space. you know, like, I mean, it, this is definitely not a, a, a recruitment talk, lah. You yeah, know, like yeah, this yeah, is yeah. just giving you all. No, the, yesterday all the I was having a recruitment talk. Okay, <laughs> yesterday I was having a recruitment talk, and I remember the person was telling me, "Oh yeah, you know, I I decided to uh, send in my application because you guys allow remote working, which we do. My whole team is remote, and you know, uh, I think I can learn on the go." I was like. How much hours, how many hours are you gonna put in to learn on the go? Because yeah. we are in an extremely niche space, right? I expect you to like work doubly hard, you know, in terms of like learning, because you have a knowledge gap, you gotta close it, right? In in finance, especially. So yeah, <clears throat> and I think I think that's the part that he oh. could answer. <laughs> <laughs> so highly unlikely he'll be joining the team. <laughs> yeah, because uh, the expectations are different. And 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 I think a lot of people are experiencing this whole like productivity paranoia on two paradigm right on on one end is a lot of people that are being detached from work right they dissociate they, they're not they're not there anymore you know people are burning out and all that and then there's this so so on this end people are i think the people that are expected to be more productive are kind of tired of it right and then on the other end which is the other paradigm and that is the part where a lot of business owners or entrepreneurs or even governments right are saying that hey must be more productive lah. and they're very concerned that these side of the people are being decked out 
and they do not no longer want to do it, right? So, so I think that's where their paranoia lies. There's, there's two paradigm of discussions, lah, right? So maybe maybe before we continue, right, we establish first what does it mean to be productive? What is productivity? Yes, it's it's just being thrown around. What I guess, uh, like literally. It, it might mean uh, the ratio between output and input. Okay, enough. <laughs> <laughs> Please continue. No, I'm not being productive. So I'll get to the point <laughs> in a sec. So uh, yeah. commonly it's uh, in the business context is usually measured as revenue per head or per full-time employee, so to speak. And, um, and actually, if I uh, answer a question you haven't asked yet, uh, that paradigm. So what drives productivity is basically like if we take uh, like in a business context, like in a job context, is parameters that are related to the, the, the person, so which is skills and motivation, and parameters that are related to the business, which is goals and processes. And usually, to your point, maybe there is like a knowledge sk uh, skill gap. So the skills, could, you could fix them like online training. You can, you know, invite people to meet them for like, you know, maybe a week, do workshops and so forth. I think it's the motivation, the issue, and the motivation is, and even people who are established in the job that get tired of it at some point, they're yeah. super productive and then they plateau and then they drop. And on the other side, from a company standpoint, um, yeah, sometimes goals are not so clear, but that could be an issue, but usually it's processes that are broken. So how do you ensure that people still interact? How do you ensure that you don't have back-to-back -back half an hour calls like for like, you know, 16 calls a day? <laughs> yeah, the, I think that do the, you do that? No, the, the, the Zoom, I mean, the whole the thing, thing. That, that came out of uh, the COVID thing was that, you know, like last time you could just go to your colleague's desk and, hey, so like, what do you think of this? Correct. Whatever, right? Now it's half an hour. Now it's just like, <laughs> can we kind of schedule a Zoom call? And then that has just kind of taken the place of like going to someone's desk. It's, it's so, uh, uh, we, we really had to kind of cut. But I think that, that we, we saw the height of that and people are just, it's reverting to the mean now. Hey, but I take a different position on that, you know, because because I never started an organization with an in-person setup, right? Um, and I, f I feel like my guys are very productive, right? I do not, anything that requires me to just check and get an answer, I'll just text and they'll come yeah, back with yeah, an yeah. answer, right? And, yeah, and those exactly, kind of discussions, exactly. yes, you got to schedule yeah. in. And, and essentially, it's a system that needs to shift, right? If, if it wants to shift. Right. And so, so for us, right, we only do check in twice a week, right? With everyone, right? Twice a week, Tuesday and Friday. Oh, I'm, I'm letting everybody know like how TFC runs, right? When it does, we only do it twice a week. And because everyone knows that we're only doing it twice a week, right? Everybody comes very prepared, you know, for, for that check in. There's no daily check in. If you cannot manage yourself, then you're in the wrong place. Right, so so it's 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 a it's a team kind of thing. No, for sure, you for know? sure. Yeah. I, th I I think that having like you know really scheduled time slots mm. uh, uh, for for these check-ins yeah. are important. Uh, the other thing that I think when we talk about productivity here, right, it is really a matter of prior prioritization. It's very subjective. Yeah. So here, and this this happens on on all levels, right? So like you know even as a you know CEO of a big company or like you know anyone in some sort of leadership position, right? I think the challenge is that filtering the amount of decisions that you have to make to say yes. maybe the top five yes and then that kind of that's kind of where you drive you derive your productivity from mm. right like sometimes it's a mental thing because you know like people like the feeling of like i accomplished like 30 things today but then like you know these 30 things maybe 20 of them were not fundamental you know so like is it then productive or not mm. right you, you mm. did do something so like you could have the you know the mental check mark yes i kind of accomplished something right but um, actually this is this comes to the very core of definition of productivity i guess in the old days there's some like a concept called FaceTime. So you would measure productivity. Ah, he worked 12, 12 hours today. Uh, now it's about, to your point, it's about uh, output. output. Like yeah. how, how much you deliver. I don't care if like I see you, you know, every day or twice a week, yeah. as long exactly. as the job is done and it's quality job, like, you know. Yeah, yeah. But 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 I have also taken, I have also taken a little bit of a shift in terms of how you do it. Because I've come to realize that I cannot just let the team do what, how they please. Because when I first started, I was like, Give me the output. I don't care how you do it. And then they'll do it, right? But I've come to realize that not everyone works the same and some of the work processes are very inefficient, right? So it drains the team. They're not productive, you know, in that sense. They put in the hours, right? And they're very disciplined. They get things done, but they're not productive by, by that measurement of like what comes in and mm. what goes out, right? Mm -hmm. So then I am starting to intervene on like, tell me, how do you the actually how? do this, <laughs> right? And then can we readjust change up some of your work processes, rethink some of these things. And firstly, I never knew these things were inside me, right? Like I know how to, <laughs> how to like, oh yeah, actually this is how I do it. So you should do it this way. And secondly, I think the team finds a little bit more of a relief 
you know, now that now that yeah, there's some sort of a guy. You know. But it's just a question there, right? Like, what does it actually mean to be paranoid? Like, product, what is productivity paranoia? So, I, I mean, are we saying, are we just asking the question of whether we're worried, whether we're worried about being productive enough all the time? Is, mm-hmm. that, is that what it's about? Yeah, so I think okay. that productivity kind of... paranoia thing, right? On yeah. one end, which is the end where a lot of uh, mainstream media will cover, is how like, you know, organizations are no longer as productive because people are leaving, you know, people don't want to come in and do a lot of those things. Mm-hmm. Right, so is that, that is, really a productivity that is, issue. That is one end, right? I, I think I think it's more yeah. complicated, right? So that's one end, but I, I'm I'm not particularly interested in covering that side of things. I think more more interesting on the other end is the person, right? Like we as individuals, we're constantly being asked to be more productive. We're constantly being asked hmm. to do more, right? But but it, it's quite draining, like, And I and I believe there's a cap to these things, right? That is a terminal growth rate, right? <laughs> At some point, you cannot grow anymore, right? Like like you already max out your processors because you already do like, I don't know. No, you cannot six, grow anymore. You cannot grow faster than what you are. Yeah, yeah. Had. So so then you rework some of these things, right? It's so so so. This shy. is why capitalism actually works, guys. No, it's like you know, at a certain point, right? Then you have people doing it for you, right, Reggie? That's what happens. Now. <laughs> but I think that's the problem, right? Because this is the society that we're in. This is the <laughs> yes, yeah. So this good. current society that demands productivity all the time, it does result in a group of people. Yeah. And I think this group is growing, whereby they're being left behind, they're falling into the gaps, mm. and that's because they can't be as productive as what society expects them to be. Mm. And normally, you know, it, we always talk about how like the strength of a team always comes down to the weakest member but what if right now your weakest member can be outsourced and replaced by AI mm. then what exactly then is the weakest member and you know you if you are among the like weaker 50% you'll be super worried mm. and that's a lot of people right now yeah yeah okay so so I, I, I get that I get that part and I get that fear you know but at some point we all gotta realize that being productive you know, um, has an output involved. Yes, that part we all know, but it's the processes involved that, that needs to you've change, right? Like, and then we can become more productive by extension. You, you know well, what I'm I guess, saying? Like, I guess like we were talking about uh, buzzwords before mm-hmm. this uh, show started. And I guess one of the buzzwords that is re- relevant is sustainability. So like, oh, I hate that buzzword yeah, because so, it's not regulated. Right? Like, no, but actually, everyone is sustainable. Like, exa- no, but <laughs> anything could be could be labeled sustainable. But the yeah. point here, like, it's literally like going back to the English word to say <clears throat> you can be productive in the short term and then burn out and then you're no more productive. Like you, mm. you run out of juice, so to speak. So how do how do you carry on? How 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 can you be productive on a long you know on long term basis, yeah. like in a lasting way? And that means that you need to. Maybe you need to, to move less fast and you need to move, like you need to have other things that are fulfilled, not just the output and the, you know, being happy about the impact you're making with the output, but also well-being, sustainability, like, you know, like fixing your life balance, right? Um, which, which doesn't mean working less, but having freedom in how you work, having, you know, time where you can switch off. I guess there's a philosophical question around are we talking productivity short term or longer term? What what it means from that standpoint as well, mm. time horizon standpoint. Which is why it's a trade-off, right? Because in order to upskill and re-engineer new processes, like if let's say your output, the average of, of, of the person in organization is like 10, okay? Let's just put a preliminary number. So like 10 is the max, okay? If you want to move that 10 to let's say 15, you need to re-engineer some processes in order to go beyond the maximum. But the process of re-engineering that requires you to temporarily not be a 10, mm-hmm. right? You need to take time off. Mm-hmm. Then maybe like your output temporarily falls to like a four or five or six in order to work on the remaining so that you can go to that 15. But the problem is we don't have that space. Mm. A lot of us, we're not being given that space. Your bosses are not giving you that space. Your manager is not giving you that freedom. And on a personal level as well, if you run your own business, if you're self-employed, you may not have that ability or freedom to go and take that time off to relearn skills and catch up. It's true. It's true. It's true. And and, and I think Agreed. sometimes it's very coarse that we're just throwing money at it, right? Hoping that, hoping that oh, with more skills future, you know, more, and uh, to be fair, I'm not saying it's bad. No. Okay, I'm not saying it's bad. Don't cancel me. Lah. <laughs> I do think it's good that the state is taking up the putting resources to, to try to 
close the gap, right? Because actually, if you're in a big company, you don't need skills future. So big company, you just keep throwing money at you to improve yeah, and improve and improve. And, and there's tons of learning tons involved. And, yeah. It never ends. It's the SMEs that are struggling with, with, with this, right? So for the government to step in with skills, with things like skills future is great, you know, but it is a very cost strategy in terms of trying to, you know, actually improve the productivity of the individual and also of the organization. Like for us, right, recently we had a website overhaul, we upgraded everything, you know, we, we changed some of the processes, all on the backs of because I hired someone new, you know, and by new, I don't mean like the person is new in work, right? very talented individual, but I managed to hire the person because, you know, her original startup closed, Right, so then and then now we got the additional capacity to do all that, like what you were saying, mm. without cutting the guys or without making mm. everybody do like an eight upon ten. Right, they can continue to do their ten ten. By but expanding, yeah, we expand because we want to upgrade, right? So exactly. we need to bring more resources. Well, it's to called it. the investment, right? Like, yeah, 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 exactly. I, I, I actually have like a uh, a slightly differing view about uh. you know, so like, you know about sustainability. Mm. That's a great point that you raise, uh. and like processes i think that we can only regulate so much and then we can only improve so like a lot of this battle with productivity and productivity kind of paranoia right, i feel it's actually a very subjective and internal thing of course of right course. first of all it starts with the fact that a lot of people uh, even myself right uh, when we first joined the workforce right we need to kind of step back from the idea that this job or this career right is meant to kind of replace even though you spend a lot of time in it careers and jobs over promise that means like people when 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 they get into an industry or when they start a business and they or they or they kind of like you know they 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 build something right they expect to get a lot of meaning and fulfillment and all the other stuff right out of this particular aspect of their life mm. and I think that's completely unrealistic you know because like there's no perfect job there's no perfect career you know, things are gonna be chaotic and you might not and your your motivations might change you mm. might run out of passion these are things that will happen and like I think that the more we kind of push that passion driven lifestyle where everything you do needs to be super meaningful, the more people are going to find out that, you know what? Life isn't what, you've, what, what it's promised. Fair, fair that, point. Is, is a, it's very cynical and very realistic. Like, no, you know? it's a fair point. Right? But then when you, so when you think about how to make that sustainable, right? And this is actually the hard part because I think it's extremely difficult and I haven't by any means kind of gotten there <laughs> <Cut> yet. <it. laughs> right? But That's if you're talking about it, bro. If you're <laughs> able to make your life style, your life, right? Like don't make passion or, or, or goals, right? Like, you know, the reason you get up, right? What I mean by this is that if you are able to be a performer because it is just who you are, right? Devoid of any kind of passion or goal or anything, right? That is the ideal, la. but it's damn hard. So like, you know, like if let's say you, you, you didn't have something pushing you, right? And then you're still expected to rock up and perform, right? Like how many people can actually do that? Mm. You know, um, but what I mean by this is that most of us actually put passion or, or some sort of like goal as the reason why we get out of bed, right? But what if that actually kind of erodes over time, mm. right? What, what, that, that, that is actually like where, where it becomes less sustainable. Yeah, you brought a very interesting um, angle to the sustainability world, which is balance. Like, mm. you know, to be happy, do you need to be successful with like the literate, uh, you know, sense of that term, i.e. successful career, get to the next level, get a lot of money? Um, or is it about, you know, having a balance in your life where you have health, you have like, you know, financial maybe uh, wealth as well and, you know, happy with your family and so forth. I think it's about that equation, which, which is evolving. And interestingly, I guess we're talking about productivity now on the back of COVID. It's not just because COVID changed the way we work, like the virtual work kind of thing. It's also because COVID made people think about, you know. There's an awakening. What, exactly. what do I really want? What, what do I really want? Like what success means? What is, it, what is important to me? Mm. So how should I drive my, my, my life? Exactly. And, yeah. uh, and hence it's beyond just the process of I'm sitting I've at home so like with my computer. Yeah, I've met so many people yeah. that do that. And I, and I, yeah. and I think you, you start to see this thing frame up, right? Like you have different set of goals and that is the baseline, right? Like you want to achieve different, different things at, at any one point in time, right? And the whole aspect of productivity is really just a process where you are putting this X amount of things into the machine mm. to then create an output for you. Call it AI. Yeah, right? <laughs> call, call it AI, you know, whatever, right? Or, and and the, simplest, uh, the simplest unit is money, yep. right? The, mm. the simplest unit in, the, in, in this structure, in this society is money. And then you take the money to go and achieve what you want to achieve, right? So, so when, when you start to see it from that view where you separate it, right? That passion no longer is important. That is true. And, and you can then on some level 
separate your your optics of yourself at work and who you are as an individual you know um to yeah yeah you can you can yeah. separate that and i think it's quite it's quite yeah. powerful yeah. are you yeah. saying that we all going to become robots like- no, 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 no 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 but 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 I, because because i have a framework in my head right where where when i talk to people about what is work right essentially work is a package number of like tasks done Right, so you yeah. package an X amount of tasks A B C D E F G. You package it together and then you sell it to somebody. That's a job, essentially. Correct. Yeah. Right, and so A B C D E F G um, may or may not fulfill your one two three four five goals. Right, so you at any one point in time you have one two three four five goals, right? And you sell your your you 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 participate in this thing called a job where it has A B C D E F G mm. in terms of its work tasks. Mm. Other than getting the money at the end of the month, or you know, uh, getting a good payout on equity at the end of the whole grind, actually, some of these tasks that you're doing does fulfill that one, two, three, four, five goals, mm. but not always. Not always, yeah. Not always. Maybe creativity is your one of your goals, right? and then maybe task A and B requires that, and then mm. you you get to achieve that. Right? Mm. But if it if it doesn't, then it's okay lah. Then you can do something else out of work mm. to achieve mm. your your three, four, five goals that that yeah. objectively um, work cannot give you. Yep. Right, but 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 that one is quite a tangential discussion already, lah. Right? Hey, I hope you're enjoying Wise and Shine so far. I'm your host Reggie, aka your chief and in And for us to continue to do this show, so that you become a tad bit wiser every week, you gotta like, share, subscribe, help us be the algorithm. But even more importantly, if you can comment in the comment section below, let us know your thoughts and also some questions that you would love us to answer. Yeah, now back to the show. I, I guess. Uh like the, the question from like the two uh, statements that you guys made is, so we, we, we're talking about the what and the how. So what should, should I deliver and how should I do it? And the question is, do I need a why? Mm. And maybe you don't need a why, like to your point, I don't need a purpose in my job so I can still fulfill that through other aspects of my life. And maybe some people would say, I need to so call it passion, you call it drive, you can call yeah. it like purpose. It's, it's, very, it's very subjective. And it's, you yeah. know, it, but, but like it's down to the individual. Yeah, I, I think it it starts with actually having a, a very realistic conversation about uh you know the role of work and jobs in a in career and our society, and um how how that conversation is actually happening on many levels right from like you know um and, and when people are still in school, you know when when people are you know talking to employers when you you're kind of starting a company on your own, these are things that I think that uh. We should have a realistic chat about this, uh, mm-hmm. and like, and that is a different chat. It's that a, one is a very chat, big and complex right? but, chat. But at yeah? the same time, you cannot expect people to be productive, right, in a certain way without also understanding what they want out of it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so I, I think it's a two way thing, right? Like, and but at the same time, people don't usually know what they want. I think sometimes so also it's because these discussions are not being had. Yeah. Like, you know, we all yeah. know the hallmark of a good manager includes being able to manage your subordinates, uh, yeah. helping them to meet their goals, whether that's in terms of, you know, climbing the corporate ladder, um, growing in terms of gaining a new skill, so on and so forth, right? But a lot of managers right now, they're so swamped with all the tasks mm. that they fail to have this conversation. And hence, it's always like, I demand 100 or 110% out of you. But actually, I don't know what is your bigger why. Exactly. So yep. as a result, right, then the person eventually burns out. And because right. I don't know the why as a manager, you then can't reconcile and get the person back on track. And then the worst case scenario is when the person just throws in the tower and then leaves the organization. You have to restart from scratch. And then you are left in that position because we all know that retraining someone new Very is expensive. worse than retaining someone. So you now have even more things for your to-do <laughs> list and even less time to have that kind of conversation with a new hire because you just want to bring them up to speed. So the whole cycle just repeats and repeats and I guess that's why we're all here today to talk yeah. about this topic because yeah. it's gotten to a stage where we really need to address this elephant in the room. And you know what's, what's even more interesting? I will say that that manager is not productive. Hmm. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because in a way, within right? that, within his or her parameter of work, right? This is your main task. Yeah, they're focusing on right. the outputs and like the twenty percent mm. of the whys and all are mm. being completely ignored. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah and, but and, I think it's also because they are focusing on what's measurable first in the immediate short term. Mm. So, like what you guys say, it's the short term versus long term productivity, right? And everyone's all focused on short term now. I need to protect my job. I need to get it up to speed. I just need this output done, and they forget about the other twenty percent that is really so fundamental to driving that eighty yeah. percent. Mm. Okay. And I guess, like, just uh, absolutely hundred uh, percent agree with you. Back to the input and output. Like one type of input that we neglect is energy. So it's about how much energy you need to, to, to carry on the task. And mm-hmm. 
if it becomes too much because you don't have that why or you don't have you know like you just uh, like you do things in automated way like your motivation would drop and the effort you would need to carry on your task would would uh, would increase and that makes it not productive because not sustainable yeah like yep. and, and, and when I have very low energy I will cancel the meeting <laughs> but I know that because I'm in a different power structure right I have the ability to say you know nobody would nobody was really attack me in that sense right but of course i will i will make it very clear like you know hey, i'm not feeling too well let's just don't waste each other's half an hour mm. you just write me a written update of what is happening maybe at the end of the day i will get back to you on it right because my energy is so low mm. that if i go in i'm just gonna be like my face is here mm. our cameras are on but my Brain mind is, is <laughs> I, I find that somewhere they, in yeah. Vuvu land you know or something, yeah. right? do, do you guys find your, your energy levels drop like um significantly in the afternoon uh yeah in the so, afternoon yeah it? so yeah. so like i mean i, I can I mean, since we're on a topic right yeah my my productivity hack right so what i do yeah, yeah. we're gonna talk about productivity hack but thanks for the very beautiful tension <laughs> <laughs> right. You're, right. Get, you're getting very good at this well, thank huh? you. yeah <laughs> thank you. Thank good you. training done yes, right yes. right right so like thing is that okay uh you know people always say that breakfast is the most important meal right mm. actually i don't i don't buy that la. like what 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 i do what i've been doing and what works right i don't know how sustainable this is so like, let's just say because my kid wakes me up at say 6 30 right then by 7 a.m. I go for, for my morning run, get my workout done, come back, right? After I take a shower, it's like a cup of black coffee, right? Skip breakfast and bam, you're like a product, productivity freak for the next like six or seven hours, right? Until you take your next meal. So if you can extend like, you can push back your next meal as far as you can, right? Say like, you know, like the 2 or 3 p.m., right? After you have that meal, you're going to crash. But like, you know, within that, <laughs> that six or I seven know, hours, right? We're going to pivot now to <laughs> you're, you're intermittent freak. fasting. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I, I so don't you don't have breakfast. Yeah, so I, I, used to, I used to take breakfast, but then I realized that actually when I stopped doing that and then like I, I and, 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 and if you throw in a workout and not eat and then take a coffee, right? You're going to, you're, you're, you're going to be, be fully charged uh, at so least you're basically next... just doing IF la, intermittent yeah, fasting intermittent fasting. And, but, but <laughs> yeah. you, do you realize one thing <laughs> yeah that's true this, this is because that within the parameter you know you need to optimize further yeah correct okay that means that means I'm only giving you 6 hours right? let me keep it simple right? you have 6 hours a day but now right your task pool has just like gone mm. more so by extension, it means you need to optimize your mm. six hours, right? And that's why people even do like meal prep, you know, like mm. clock in a workout during lunchtime, you know, uh, pick up a call on the way to another meeting. You know, all these are really just small little things that people do to optimize their time further so that by extension, they become more productive. Like a lot of people these days, I feel are over-optimized already, right? They've reached a point where even... Workout is HIIT, right? 30 huh. minute workout. Oh, right? 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 It, no, no, but it, it is not it's not a it's not a judgment. It's just a reality because your time is so stacked up. You have two kids at home, you have a high performing job that requires you to do that because you're being paid top dollar and the company will just they don't care who you are. They just care that if I pay you this 15, 20,000, you better give me a bigger output, right? So they come down on you. You gotta do it. Society expects you to do, you know, parenting and all that, and then you optimize every other time that you can have relative control but actually so that's the point we we're talking about before it's not about optimizing your time squeezing more in less in, in the same amount of time it's doing less like focus on the right tasks because mm. we, we mm -hmm. especially like in the corporate world you do so many things that are actually meaningless and it's because you don't really think you, you have been doing them so you keep doing them and it's a low pro productivity task like it doesn't contribute to the output uh, it keeps you like it gives you mental comfort, like you ticking the boxes, like it's a to-do that is going, you know, going down the to-do list. Uh, but yeah, so it's about prioritization. It's easy to say, obviously, it's more harder to, to yeah. do. I mean, like the challenging part is getting that list down short, shorter. Yeah, yeah. So it's always yeah. kind of like <clears throat> hard to, be, to do. To be yeah. fair, I don't yeah. think those two are mutually exclusive. Mm. Some tasks you just have to do it and they are optimized, mm. right? It's like you, you, your list has already come down, <laughs> but it's still more. You know? It's just like that article, right? Where they say, uh. yes, answering emails is your job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, something like that, right? And, and like, like, I have a very good friend of mine. She was like, I started taking CBD oil because I have to optimize right rest time. And I'm not saying anybody should do any of, of this kind of thing, right? It's not, my uh, friend started taking CBD. She's, she's in Hong Kong. She started taking CBD oil because she was telling me, I have no time. I, and, and I want to find the shortest way to come back together. Hi, Chad. What on earth is this CBD? CBD, oh, CBD oil is the, is the... Thank uh, you. Is the, asking. Uh, <laughs> I don't know either. It's the other... So like, you know, you know when you smoke... When, okay, uh, not when you smoke, but like when you consume marijuana, uh, there are two types of compounds. 
So CBD is the one that gives you a body high. So like it makes you makes you relax. It's a relaxant. Right? But oh. th- THC is the one it's that's a hallucinogenic. That is, it's psychoactive. Yeah. So what, what happens yeah. is people have I mean, uh, Singapore is not... Uh, I don't know there's a legal CB, framework. CBD right? is not legal here. Yeah, I no. don't... Uh, uh, just take it as it's not legal. Just share... Just taking it yeah. as an example. THC definitely not. Yeah. Oh, in Thailand <laughs> it is. Uh. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I yeah. Thailand and legalize it. No, that's why every time you fly back... When you fly back and then there's a Bangkok flight that's come in, right? The security is very heightened one. You know, which... <laughs> of course, lah, right? Because it's not legal here. But anyway, the idea here is you, re- you essentially the, the industry has allowed to separate, has gotten to a position where they can separate the relaxant and the high thing, right? And then they, they remove the high thing and then you just take the relaxant. I think it's worrying that your friend is relying on that. Exactly. Because it's a reflection of what the current yeah. culture exactly. is. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, but CBD, yeah. CBD oil is, 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 is like, like feng yu lah. Like feng, oh. Come on lah. Don't sing, do la. this guys. We don't want to get <laughs> CBD <laughs> was like feng yu. That one la. is like no. another viral video. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, but but for Guys, me, if okay, we, okay, if you me. can drink beer after work, right? There is nothing wrong with. I mean, it's it's not even like okay. But anyway, this is a different topic. Yeah, yeah. yeah the difference yeah, yeah. now no. is that that's not legalized. Yeah, okay. No, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Well, I'm very cheatery, right? I don't get enough of my. Okay, but any anyway, hey, anyway. Man, I- <laughs> control. <laughs> Okay, okay, but I okay. do want to add something. I think. No, what? but I want. Yeah, please, okay, please, you, please. You can go first. No, but because I, I. Sh- that was exactly the point that came into my yeah, head when she told me that. It's like wow, you're doing so much. Until you have to optimize to this this level, right? right? You have to essentially take things and and many people do it. Even coffee, even like take a smoke break. You know, it's just at which intensity, right? You're you're doing a lot of these things to like jerk yourself in. Like the other day, someone was smoking the, like uh, sniffing the feng yu, right? And I was like, like, why you sure, do feng, feng yu? yu? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I, I smell it like boss Lee, like boss Lee, right? So he was doing the feng yu thing. I was oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah, there, I was like, like, why the hell you do feng yu? Because I never liked that, that smell or anything, right? And then he was like, because it gives me a joke so that I can like, Stay, I guess the same reason away. why some people drink multiple cups of coffee. Exactly, right? Even exactly. though they know, it's not is, exactly. exactly. Okay, bring it back okay. to legal ground. Yeah, yeah. But I think <laughs> one key thing is that uh, that shows um how our culture is not exactly evolving properly yet. Mm. So let me put it in context. Uh. COVID and the pandemic has been great because we all learn to be more productive while being at home, especially when there's destruction, mm-hmm. right? When there are other people making noise as well, when you have young kids and helping them with their home learning and you still have to do your job. So most of us became more productive with lesser time. But this is the problem for Asian cultures. We are still basing our idea and notions of productivity on both output and time. Mm. So it come down and I start, I, I'm starting to see this in organizations <clears throat> whereby, yes, okay, you can now achieve like your previous work in five hours instead of the eight. So you are not being productive lah. Uh, the, 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 you you need to fill up your remaining <laughs> three. It's a very old school way of thinking. <laughs> yeah, right? it's yeah, not yeah. the American Western way whereby it's really based on your actual task and output, right? Now it's really like I just want to milk this person as much as I can because there's three more hours that I can get out of this person. Yes. Uh, although oh. I, th- I have to say that uh, in my opinion, uh, I think uh, there's no perfect system. I have a lot of like issues with how the, Amer- the Americans work as well. So like, mm-hmm. you know, like, it's not perfect. Yeah, yeah. But also like the way that we do in the in Asia also have got problems. So like yeah. you know. I no, mean, no. I'm just, yeah, yeah. I'm just an unhappy it's person. Like, like, so yeah, yeah. Generally, like, generally, they like, all have pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, I, I take a point. I no, but I, agree. I have yeah, a very interesting yeah. tangent on that, right? In, in the sense of like the whole American way, whatever, right? To me, right, it's, it's not so about like whose way or what way. It's just more like what processes are you involved in the global economics, right? Because if you're in the creative process, right, which is what we are struggling to enter, we want our workforce to enter that space, right? We, we That's why we're trying to like retrain, reteach the people to become productive in a different way. And that is not measured by time. Yes. I, and, I can and, tell you what it's measured by in those, in those corporations. Yeah, yeah. Okay? How well you present and talk shit in front of like, you know, people. <laughs> that's it. Like, you know, and then like, there's a difference between actually like, you know, climbing in some of these American co- corporations versus an Asian corporation where it's all about, you know, output, mm. right? So there's always that clash. Like, you know, it's like, who is more visible in a corporation? You know, uh, you know, that, 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 that's, that's, that's also, actually yes. like, also a big part of the issue yeah 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 right? I, I've there's seen a lot of also. time wasted in actually like getting buy-in from like kind of like stakeholders yeah. which is also bullshit I don't know how that's pro- productive as well but this is a crap yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. this is a corporate game I mean I'm sure some of the audience will be 
in yeah, this yeah, game they're, as well. They're definitely in the game. And right? not <laughs> sure what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I'm sure some of you guys can relate, right? Where you're in a situation, you're in a corporate culture whereby you have learned to achieve the same, if not more, with lesser time than what you used to because yeah. you no longer spend time at the pantry gossiping with your fellow colleagues. And you a lot of these things that were not so productive in the past, pre-COVID, when we were all working in offices, have now changed. So we're really prioritizing and really being like 100 or 110% productive. But therein lies the other problem, which is then the organization realized there's extra capacity and they want to milk that capacity. But that does not happen when you're already maximizing. You can't be maximized all the time. Mm. And that's why mental wellness is... Exactly, and that's, that's when the stage. exactly, and that's when the the short term productivity and the long term productivity exactly. kind of difference come in, right? Whether or not you can play this game for a prolonged period, right? It's like okay, you can be a very good trader for a year, but can you stay up, you know, for ten years to keep doing it, right? Mm. Like so, so, and and that is the part that I think, you know, the the dissonance between what organizations want, which is to make back all the money they've lost, right, on, <laughs> over the past three years in a short period of time, and. And where we are as 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 part of the workforce, as people actually doing the thing, right? And and there's that there's whole dissonance which I totally understand what you're saying, right? And and let's let's be clear, and I'm not a big fan of working back into the office, right? I think you waste a lot of time squeezing our Raffles place, although it's really optimized. Singapore travel is very easy. Right? You go on the train, ding ding ding, <laughs> and half an hour you're there, right? But the pressure is there. There's a lot of urban stress because you're hanging out with a lot of people and it, it's very crammed depending on who you are, blah, blah, right? And But actually, yeah. so I think uh, back to COVID times and like productivity, I think we all appreciated working from home, uh, at least at start, uh, many of us. Uh, you, you would take that commute time to do your gym in the morning. You would, you know, see more of your kids. They would see you more. I don't know if you see them more, but uh, they know that you're working at home. They see you visually, but you're still busy on calls. But I think at some point you just get tired of it. And I think you need a mix of both. So you need you need to interact with people, with human beings. It's not just about like input, output, and it has to be done and what's the, the shortest way, the most efficient way to get it done. Like you cannot carry on like your life like this. Mm -hmm. At some point you need social, you know, interaction. I, yeah. 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 And and that's a part where I don't know how you get it. It's not necessarily going to the office, but like it's, Yeah, yeah. And and I think and and I think that's the part where it's interesting because now you're Amongst your, you know, one, two, three, four, five goals, one of it is socializing. Mm. You, you don't need to take it from the office. Mm -hmm. Well, you can it, take it from your friends. It, you know? it, actually, I would, elsewhere. I, I wouldn't. I mean, like, I think I would define socializing. Okay, so as definitely professional socializing. Yeah, yeah no, as in I like, also understand. as in like, uh, I, this totally makes sense in a small outfit like you know ours, like mine, for example, where we don't really need to kind of like the task can be executed at home, right? A lot of it, and then like um. But I can I can also see the reasoning in like say large corporations right where the, I guess the reason why a lot of these big companies want to see FaceTime with their employees is because it is quite difficult to understand how someone can lead a team like let's just say you're looking to kind of mm -hmm. groom someone to kind of manage a team or to promote somebody to a certain role right it's very difficult to kind of do that without seeing this person you know operate you know, in person with people and within the team. Like, you know, I think that that kind of like in-person skill set um, uh, is almost a, a requirement if you're looking to kind of climb up the corporate ladder. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, and, so and I guess you, uh, that, yeah. So, so you're raising a great point, which is to inspire, do you need to connect? And if Correct. the answer is yes, can you connect on video as you connect like in a face-to-face -face setting? Um, and, you know, that that's a tough question. Yeah. But I guess like... To, to, to take the other side, so to speak, uh, like the other thesis of corporates, I guess they have two imperatives, that, at, at least how, that's how traditionally it has been working. One is culture. How do you maintain a culture if people are scattered? And I'm not saying you cannot do it, like if you're startups like us, you know, that's in your DNA, like from the ground up, you, you, you have that. But if you're whatever, yeah. Coca-Cola and you want, to, you want to maintain your culture, maybe it's harder. The second thing is, is teamwork. Um, how do you how do you get people to work together create like a team dynamics let's put it this way without them seeing each other and not being just zoom calls one after the other i think that's the trick mm -hmm. okay so so i i have one question i really want to ask everybody is like when you are down when you are not productive like objectively mm -hmm. you know you're not productive mm -hmm. what do you do so for me uh i mean a little more privileged position where i can take a few steps back mm -hmm. i can take a break yeah so i will do something that I need to recharge myself. Sometimes that's in the form of a workout. 
don't judge me. I do heat workouts, okay? Yes. Yeah, because I know time. 30 minutes. Okay. But I think like, I have different reasons for why I'm not productive. Uh, one of them is because I literally sit on my ass for too long. <laughs> my watch would tell me, it's time to get up and start working out. And I can feel, I don't know if you guys feel it or maybe it's just me and old age, but I can feel it in my bottom half yeah. when I sit for too long. I feel that tingly thing and I'm like, oh, shucks, I really need to go and work out and like, you know, get my blood moving again. So I'll do a quick workout and that, that like, you know, makes, makes me more hyped again. And after a quick shower, I feel refreshed then I can redo my work. And other times, it's really the quietness that I need. Because as a writer, I function a lot on quietness. I think clearer and I articulate and write my words better when there's no kid running around, mommy, mommy, play with me, mommy, you know I need to tell you something. Yeah, so that's super important. So sometimes my productivity simply means choosing not to be productive during the day, to go and do something else, to run some errands, and then like working after my kid has fallen asleep. So last night, for example, one of those days, even though I know we had early morning recording today, um, my kid fell asleep at 12 midnight and I had an article that needed to go out today. Mm. But I didn't have the time yesterday and all the hate space to work on it in the afternoon because I was just so flooded with meetings that by the time I was just done, my social battery was just down. And when my social battery is down, I just cannot write. Mm. You know, so I had to just, okay, put it aside, go and spend time with my kids, go and have a dinner, squeeze in a quick workout. And then after that, my kid fell asleep, have that quietness, for one hour and I could get things done so much quicker mm. and that helps because some, my average time to write an article is six hours mm. but when I am having a writer's block it can easily go to 12 if not 20 hours I so it's super I mean. important for me to manage that and if sometimes I feel like okay I'm not in the state to do a six hour today I need to go and take some time off do something else and then get back to usually then I don't even need six hours it can be done in like three or four hours mm. yeah so that's one productivity hack the other one is like what Mark said the meals, I think, really help. I do have that after lunch crash. Mm. Yeah, I think especially when you eat too much carbs. So one dietary change that I made, which also partly was because of weight loss, but I noticed the health benefit after that is that not to take too much carbs. Because the more carbs I eat, the more sluggish I feel. Mm. I don't know if that's like grounded in, in science or medical um, you know, evidence, but the reality is I just feel that yes. way. Yeah, yes. at, at least in my body. La. So I cannot have um intermittent fasting though. <laughs> to me, if I, I don't have my breakfast, I cannot work during that, that time at all. Yeah, so it's a slightly... It doesn't work for everybody, yeah, for sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. but it's nice yeah. to see how like one thing that works for you may not work yeah. for me and yeah. hence like everyone's really just subjective. Yeah. What, yeah. What's your yeah. other productivity hack other yeah. than I am? When you're down, when you're down and out, oh, what do you really do? For, I mean, honestly, for me... Uh, uh, I, I try to take a step back and then ask myself, okay, look, um, have I missed any anything important, right? So like if let's say that there's nothing, if my, if my lack of productivity hasn't resulted in, you know, me missing a deadline, missing meetings, all this kind of thing, right? Important stuff, right? Then I just don't think about it. Mm. Because like, because then, then I'm just worried about kind of, it's my own insecurities. Mm. And so that's, that's something that I just have to deal with. So like I've, I've just worked to a point where like, you know, like uh, first question is like, why do I not feel productive? And then if it's because like, I'm really not getting the work that I need to do done, right? Then, you know, I, I just have to force myself to do it. Mm. Right. But if then, if not, then um, I just, you know, take a chill pill and then tell myself that tomorrow's going to be better. Mm. That's it. So like that. That's... So one is actual productivity problem. The other one is existential crisis. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> is you, you there have, you different, have, right? Yeah, you have yeah. to kind of try and separate because yeah, sometimes yeah, yeah, yeah. you know you feel as if like you know like you you're accountable to yourself and then you don't feel good at the end of the day mm. and then but you're not ask yourself why like, is it because mm. like you know like you know um you know yeah. There, there are certain things like, like you have to kind of process it like, mm. right so, so we're seeing two things in common which is really taking a step back yeah, yeah. you take a step back yeah. but then like if obviously if there are you know it, things that I really have to do and I'm not done it right then I mean I, I don't know whether I have a hack for that like. it's just you just gotta gotta you know go through it like, and then get it done like, you know mm. uh uh, I, I don't know whether there's a, a way out. <laughs> I, I've done that before where I had like writing right. deadlines uh, and yeah, I'm really like not in the mood Correct, or I'm really like not yeah. in that state but I still have to do it because the like the deadline is here. Mm. So if, usually I try the first method which is buy more time. Mm. Yeah. You know? But sometimes I can't, right? I'll just force myself. What usually happens 90% of the time is that the output, the quality of work is so bad that 
I will then buy time the second round. Yeah. So after that goes through, you know, then I will, and then when it comes back again, I'll make sure I have, I allocate more time. So I end up actually spending even more time on the piece. Mm. And sometimes that goes through even more rounds of revision than if I had been in the correct place and stayed yeah. at the point of writing. Yeah. So that's something that I realized. Sometimes just forcing through, especially if you're in a more creative role mm. that really requires thinking, forcing you yourself to go, just go and do it just to meet your deadline and be productive may not actually be that productive. I agree. I agree. Yeah, I guess so that there's one advice I would give to everyone, which is do what these guys are doing, which I can't. No, which it's is not piggybacking. Be, be, give me a real no, answer. No, but, <laughs> I, no, I'll, I, no, I'll give you the answer. Yeah. So that there's what I wish I would do and there's what I do. So what I wish I would do is to step back and, you know, do, you know, you know, take a step back and think through, refresh yourself and do something else. What I do because I'm a, I'm a founder of a startup, I have guilt. Like when I don't do stuff, because uh, I, I don't you know, answer to anyone beyond like the success of the, uh, the company, people who are you know, investors, employees, clients that um, put, uh, put their money on you. And hence, I still work when I'm not productive, but I try to focus on things that require me less uh, effort. Like mm. things that I can automate, for instance, that you're going to laugh, but uh, maybe accounting. I, I hate it, but that at least I can switch off my brain and do like a punching an Excel spreadsheet as opposed to try to think about the next product that we're going to be launching mm -hmm. and how to fix it and stuff. So, mm -hmm. so that's my hack is do like shift. If you don't have the energy to do, sometimes you can't like. If you're writing a piece, you need to write it. On but it's time. a good hack though. So mm. to spend the time doing things that are still productive, but not like super, super core mm. and like requires Demanding you like for your brain. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. What about you? What's your hack? I, I, am, I am someone that I will separate the work tasks, right? In the sense that I have different buckets for different tasks. Right? So I have like ideation work. I have like collaborative work. I have like planning work and I have execution work. So, so these things I, I like I have a different setup in my head and I know that for, dif so for different type of work right, I need different environment right so if let's say I'm stuck with ideation right I will essentially go to another cafe mm. go somewhere else go somewhere fresh go somewhere different you know read a book talk to people go somewhere else you know so I have learned over time how to ignite the thing if I need to Mm. right to to you know so so you learn about yourself right mm. in that sense right so and if collaborative work, you know, which is a lot of talking to people and all that, and I'm not in the mood, right? I'll go on the walk and I will talk to them on the go. Because when I'm on the go, I'm more willing to talk. Mm. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why you always get voice message from me because I'm on the go and I'm talking. Blah, 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 blah. So, so that is the, the... Essentially, that's what it is, right? Understanding what is the type of thing that you're trying to do, you know, and how can you then work with yourself, to ignite that, especially mm. when you're not in the right mood. Yeah. So if, if there are two more specific things, one is to break down all the work tasks because most of the time when you think of like writing one piece or like doing one video, actually there are multiple tasks involved that can be fitted into different buckets, mm. right? So, so it's a different way of doing things. And the other one probably is for managers, lah, right? Don't, don't use the same barometer to measure everyone. Right, because some people can be like texting in a meeting, but actually it's them trying to stay with you to be present right because this thing is just boring the hell out of them and <laughs> of course right it's not totally in their sphere but they have to be there because they are in tangential sphere so they are trying to stay around you know and they are doing something else to stay around it's like how people are fidgeting with pen you know like when we were or maybe actually they're school. taking notes on the phone yeah maybe maybe mm -hmm. right so, judge. so do not use one barometer to measure everyone especially if you're in the management right? you, you need to realize different people just work differently mm. I'll put focus lah yeah, I think I have one last hack to share, which mm. is I feel in, for most of us, right, social media and WhatsApp, mm. especially the 24 7 <laughs> on, can be very draining. Mm. So if you're someone who's like me, you really need space and no interruptions, right? I would just go like uh off do not offline for yeah. Off, I won't yeah. I won't have my one. I'll put my phone somewhere else so I or even silent it. So I don't even see or mm. hear any notification. And for a good two or three hours, just work. Yeah. And I'm super productive. But I when agree. my WhatsApp is open and da -dung, da -dung, da -dung, you know, oh, it keeps disrupting that whole flow. And that's when I do your other hack where you work on tasks that don't really need that much thinking. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like answering emails, scheduling meetings, calendar and all of that. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, fair. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah. So just use do not disturb. Is the I guess the, in, in summary, <laughs> it feels like this is a it's pretty much an internal process, though, Actually, it is. There, it process. I, I think it's a it, there, yeah, there I mean, are multiple internal level thing and there's yeah. external things. And, well, and right. I think back in Wise and Shine, we try to like take the complex shit and then bring it down to like what you can do, right? I think that's the that's the main idea. So yeah, at the end of the day, if you are really in a situation where you need a break, you need to like you know, get off the grid on this corporate run, right? Okay, lah, just go and take a break, lah, mm-hmm. right? Like, don't don't care about what the mainstream media tell you, you know, like, companies need you to come back, blah, blah. Of course, they need you. If not, they cannot function, right? But if you need a break and you cannot function, go and take then a break. Then we owe it to ourselves to take that yes, break yes, so yes, we can it regain is. our productivity. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What is your bad productivity hack? Let us know in the comments. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank thanks. you. Thanks, thanks for having us. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. Complex, complex. complex.